What's up everyone, welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Toyota Corolla. Let's get right into it with the chart. Lots of different options for you to choose from on your 2024 Corolla. Both uh, you know, powertrain options as far as many different trim levels as well. Ranging from the LE to the XSE for the gas models, hybrid LE to the hybrid XLE for the hybrids and all staying within $22,000 to $27,000, which is phenomenal to see. Love seeing a vehicle that's going to be in the 20,000s, even for a top trim. What are you getting for an engine? Gas trims will be a 2-liter 4-cylinder, 169 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque. The hybrids will have a 1.8-liter 4-cylinder, 138 horsepower, 156 pound-feet of torque. So slightly more torque, but definitely you know the lush, powerful engine overall going with the hybrid. You're going to get CVT on the gas model and eCVT for the hybrid. Front-wheel drive is standard on all the grass, gas trims and the only option, only front wheel drive, no all wheel drive on the gas. Hybrid gives you an option for all wheel drive on the LE, SE, and Nightshade. The XLE is only front wheel drive. Don't ask me why, doesn't make sense to me, uh, I'm not too sure. MPGs are varying depending on the trim. Uh, it's definitely gas and hybrid, the best setup you can get will be that hybrid LE or XLE at 53 city, 46 on the highway, but even the worst performing Gas engine is still 31 city, 40 on the highway, not bad at all. Real quick, guys, here at Ben's Car Reviews, I strive to bring the most accurate, relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no waste of time. If that's something that's interesting to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. I think this is the best styling the Corolla has ever had. Toyota continues to elevate their models to be more modern than the competition. This is a small car. There isn't a lot of room to have a lot of design features, but Toyota seems to stack them up. And the best part is, like I mentioned, you have a good looking car for somewhere in the range of the 20,000s of dollars. Uh, you know, overall, just really good to see here uh, initially. The Corolla has a low, fairly wide, and fairly aggressive stance, which definitely beefs up the overall look. You know, makes it look, you know, not like a $20,000 car. The nightshade trim, which definitely is the most intriguing when at first look, gets 18 inch bronze finished alloy wheels along with blacked out badging and mirror caps definitely a very unique looking Corolla here you get some boring 16 inch wheels on the base trims but working up to the top you are back to 18 inches with alloy wheels with graphite color finish that looks significantly better than the base LED lights all around for the headlights tail lights and daytime running lights I really like the headlight design for this Corolla generation I anticipate a switch soon though to match the new styling of the Camry, Prius, and Crown which are all resembling each other with the new headlight look. There's available dark gray metallic, gray or black rear spoiler, diffuser, and side rocker panels. This thing has a better looking diffuser than my Dodge Challenger. Um, that's a conversation for another day, but definitely something that frustrates me. You can get a plain black grille or a mesh gloss black grille depending how you trim. Most door handles and side view mirrors are color match and you can get heated mirrors depending. You can get a nice looking double tip single chrome exhaust outlet. Give this a sporty look. There are eco and normal modes as well as paddle shifters. You gain sport mode the higher up the ladder you climb and the hybrids offer a hybrid sport mode also. A great theme that Toyota is making available on these new models is optional two tone color options and the Corolla is offering that as well. I love seeing this because it's something different and unique, and you just don't see that every day. Usually, the black looking roof is from a panoramic moonroof, not actually because it is, you know, two different color options. This thing measures in at 182.5 inches long, 56.6 uh, inches tall, has 5.3 inches of ground clearance, and weighs in at the most 3,150 pounds. There's also convenience and premium packages available to spruce things up for you. I think the best bangs for your buck, yes that is plural, will be the nightshade trims. I'll leave it open for interpretation because I think the hybrid versus gas is a personal preference. The MPGs are obviously the main difference, but the hybrid will also be a little slower. But when it comes to the exterior looks, interior looks, and standard features, they will be equal to each other. And I love the price tag being at $25,000 and some change you know, for what this thing brings as far as what it looks like. Uh, and what it provides on the inside, definitely a good deal for $25,000. A fun and adequately designed interior to match the modern looking exterior. I think Toyota nailed the design for it and it's certainly nice for the price tags compared to what you get on other models that are in the mid 20,000s. Toyota says there's plenty of space inside despite looking small from the exterior and this is a five seat capacity. 
There's an 8 inch infotainment touchscreen on all trims. Nice to see they didn't chip the bottom trim with a smaller screen. Wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto capability. Base trims get you a 4.2 inch driver's digital gauge cluster area. The top trims will get you a 7 inch setup, so that is one upgrade for the top trims right there. Seats will come in fabric, sport fabric, or soft text materials, soft text being on the top trims. Seats generally have six way driver's adjustment, four way passenger adjustment, but you can get eight way driver's adjustment the more you option. There's a tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and you can get it leather wrapped and heated on the upper trims. There's a moonroof available as well, available piano black accents, and available soft touch materials on the dash and doors. There's four USB-C ports on all trims, two in the front, two in the back, 60-40 split folding rear seats, metallic interior trim with chrome interior door handles on the top trims, available wireless charger, available ambient interior lighting, and available nine speaker premium JBL audio system that is only an option that's not standard on any setup. Up to 14.1 cubic feet of cargo volume in these. Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 for a suite of driver's assist safety and technology features. Overall, I'm happy with what Toyota has done here with how many trims there are available. It unfortunately means the lower trims will lack features since Toyota has to build upon them so much, but overall, it's not too bad for the prices. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a small sedan here in 2024, you're loving this Corolla, maybe you're also looking at Mazda 3, Subaru Crosstrek, Volkswagen Jetta, Kia Forte, Honda Civic, a lot of competition out there, and even more beyond that, that would go up against this. Uh, the Corolla looks you know, very uniquely itself, which I love. I think the Honda Civic also is a phenomenal design for its price tags. And not that the other ones don't, but I think those are my top two in designs in this area. I do think the uh, Crosstrek is a good looking car as well. Um, definitely cross compare all these options and price points that are going to be somewhat similar to each other, um, but others definitely might have more standard features uh, than this. But the great thing is if you want all those standard features, you know, you need the top trim to get it. Thankfully, the top trim is still, at most, $27,000. And a good chance you can get what you want for $25,000, $26,000, maybe even twenty-four dollars in a convenience or premium package. Um, so overall, Toyota sets you up pretty well here. You know, this vehicle is only going to do so much for you. It gets you from point A to point B. But it looks good from the outside, and you can hopefully be perfectly comfortable on the inside as well. You know, Toyota does a pretty good job at least letting you get what you want. Like I just keep saying, for not a very big price tag, which is great to see. You just don't see that very more, very much anymore with cars in 2024. Hopefully this video lays things out in a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching the Spence Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and we'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out and join if you'd like, and I'll catch you on the next Spence Car Review.